listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 144. We are continuing in the book of 1 Samuel, and we see Saul as a mighty warrior, but he can't seem to get the listen to instructions from God part of the job. So, through a series of unfortunate events, Samuel lays out the truth. You're fired. But how do you fire a king? How does Saul react to this? Stay with us to find out what happens. And we are continuing in the book of John. And in John chapter 14, we are there at the Last Supper. And Jesus has quite a speech, or sermon, or teaching, or discussion, whatever you want to call it. But Jesus introduces a new person into the narrative, and that is the Holy Spirit. The deepest secrets of heaven, the afterlife, things to come, and other ethereal spiritual matters. And it makes sense, because from here on out, the Pharisees and leaders of the law are not playing nice. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verses 24 to 52. Saul makes a careless mistake. But Saul did something very foolish that day. He made this oath. If any man eats food before evening comes, before I finish defeating my enemies, he will be under a curse. He made the soldiers promise not to eat, so none of them ate anything. Because of the fighting, the army went into the woods. There they saw a honeycomb on the ground. But they didn't eat any of it. They were afraid to break the promise. But Jonathan didn't know about the oath. He didn't hear his father make the soldiers promise not to eat. Jonathan had a stick in his hand, so he dipped the end of the stick into the honeycomb and ate some honey. He began to feel much better. One of the soldiers told Jonathan, Your father made an oath for all of us. He said that any man who eats anything today will be under a curse. That's why everyone is so weak. Jonathan said, my father has brought a lot of trouble to the land. See how much better I feel after tasting just a little of this honey? It would have been much better for the men to eat the food that they took from their enemies today. We could have killed more Philistines. That day, the Israelites defeated the Philistines. They fought them all the way from Michmash to Ajalon. So the people were very tired and hungry. They had taken sheep, cattle, and calves from the Philistines. Now they were so hungry that they killed the animals on the ground and ate them. And the blood was still in the animals. Someone said to Saul, hey, Look, the men are sinning against the Lord. They're eating meat that still has blood in it. Saul said, You have sinned. Roll a large stone over here, now. Then Saul said, Go to the men and tell them that each one must bring his bull and sheep to me. Then the men must kill their bulls and sheep here. Don't sin against the Lord by eating meat that still has blood in it. That night everyone brought their animals and killed them there. Then Saul built an altar for the Lord. It was the first altar he built for the Lord. Saul said, Let's go after the Philistines tonight. We will take everything from them. We will kill them all. The army answered, Do whatever you think is best. But the priest said, Let's ask God. So Saul asked God, Should I go chase the Philistines? Will you let us defeat the Philistines? But God did not answer Saul that day. So Saul said, 
Bring all the leaders to me. Let's find out who committed the sin today. I swear by the Lord who saves Israel that even if my own son Jonathan sinned, he must die. None of the people said a word. Then Saul said to all the Israelites, You stand on this side. I and my son Jonathan will stand on the other side. The soldiers answered, As you wish, sir. Then Saul prayed, Lord, God of Israel, why haven't you answered me today? Show us who sinned. If it was I or my son Jonathan, show Urim. But if it was your people Israel who sinned, show Thummim. Saul and Jonathan were shown to be the ones who sinned, and the people went free. Throw the Urim and Thummim again to show the guilty one, me or my son Jonathan. Jonathan was shown to be the one. Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me, what have you done? Jonathan told Saul, I only tasted a little honey from the end of my stick. Should I die for doing that? Saul said, I made an oath and asked God to punish me if I didn't keep it. Jonathan, you must die. But the soldier said to Saul, Jonathan led Israel to a great victory today. Must Jonathan die? Never! As surely as the Lord lives, not one hair of Jonathan's head will fall to the ground. God help Jonathan fight against the Philistines today! So the people saved Jonathan from death. Saul did not chase the Philistines. The Philistines went back to their place. When Saul had won full support for his rule of Israel, he fought against his enemies on every side. He fought Moab, the Ammonites, Edom, the king of Zobah, and the Philistines. He defeated Israel's enemies wherever he went. Saul was very brave. He saved Israel from all the enemies who tried to take things from the Israelites. He even defeated the Amalekites. Saul's sons were Jonathan, Ishvi, and Malkishua. Saul's older daughter was named Merab. Saul's younger daughter was named Michal. Saul's wife was named Ahinoam. Ahinoam was the daughter of Ahimaaz. The commander of Saul's army was Abner, son of Ner. Ner was Saul's uncle. Saul's father, Kish, and Abner's father, Ner, were sons of Abia. Saul was brave all his life. He fought hard against the Philistines. Anytime Saul saw a man who was strong, and brave. He put that man with the soldiers who stayed near the king and protected him. 1 Samuel chapter 15. One day Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now listen to his message. This is what the Lord all powerful says. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, the Amalekites tried to stop them from going to Canaan. I saw what the Amalekites did. Now go and fight against them. You must completely destroy the Amalekites and everything that belongs to them. Don't let anything live. You must kill all the men and women and all their children and little babies. You must kill all their cattle and sheep and all their camels and donkeys. Saul gathered the army at Talaim. There were 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 other men, including the men from Judah. Then Saul went to a valley near a city of the Amalekites, where he waited to attack his enemies. He sent a warning to the Kenites. Go away! Leave the Amalekite territory, then I will not destroy you with the Amalekites, because you showed kindness to the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. So the Kenites left that area. Saul defeated the Amalekites. He fought them and chased them all the way from Havilah to Shur at the border of Egypt. Saul captured Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. 
but he killed all the men in Agag's army. Saul and the Israelite soldiers let Agag live. They also kept the fat cattle, the best sheep, the lambs, and everything else that was worth keeping. They didn't want to destroy anything of value, but they completely destroyed everything they thought was useless to them. Then Samuel received this message from the Lord. Saul has stopped following me, so I am sorry that I made him king. He is not doing what I tell him. Samuel became angry and cried out to the Lord all night. Samuel got up early the next morning and went to meet Saul. But the people told Samuel, Saul went to Carmel. He went there to set up a stone monument to honor himself. Then he left there and went down to Gilgal. So Samuel went to Saul. Saul had just offered the first part of the things he took from the Amalekites as a burnt offering to the Lord. When Samuel came near to Saul, Saul greeted him and said, The Lord bless you! I have obeyed the Lord's commands! But Samuel said, Then what is that sound I hear? Why do I hear sheep and cattle? Saul said, The soldiers took them from the Amalekites. They saved the best sheep and cattle to burn as sacrifices to the Lord your God. But we destroyed everything else. Samuel said to Saul, Stop! Let me tell you what the Lord told me last night. Saul answered, Tell me what he said. Samuel said, In the past, you didn't think that you were important, but the Lord chose you to be the king. So you became the leader of the tribes of Israel. The Lord sent you on a special mission. He said, go and destroy all the Amalekites. They are evil people. Destroy them all. Fight them until they are completely finished. So why didn't you obey the Lord? You did what the Lord says is evil because you wanted to keep what you took in battle. Saul said, but I did obey the Lord. I went where the Lord sent me. I destroyed all the Amalekites. I brought back only one, their king, Agag. And the soldiers took the best sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God at Gilgal. But Samuel answered, Which pleases the Lord more? Burnt offerings and sacrifices? Or obeying his commands? It is better to obey the Lord than to offer sacrifices to him. It is better to listen to him than to offer the fat from rams. Refusing to obey is as bad as the sin of sorcery. Being stubborn and doing what you want is like the sin of worshiping idols. You refuse to obey the Lord's command, so now he refuses to accept you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned and did not obey the Lord's commands and did not do what you told me. I was afraid of the people and I did what they said. Now, I beg you, forgive me for committing this sin. Come back with me so I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I won't go back with you. You rejected the Lord's command, and now the Lord rejects you as king of Israel. When Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught Samuel's robe, and it tore. Samuel said to Saul, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today. He has given the kingdom to one of your neighbors, a man who is a better person than you are. The one who lives forever, the God of Israel, does not lie and will not change his mind. He is not like a man who is always changing his mind. Saul answered, It is true that I sinned, but please come back with me. Show me some respect in front of the leaders and the Israelites. Come with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. 
So Samuel went back with Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. Samuel said, Bring King Agag of the Amalekites to me. Agag was brought to Samuel in chains. Agag thought, It seems that I have escaped a painful death. But Samuel said to Agag, Your sword took babies from their mothers. Now your mother will have no children. And Samuel cut Agag to pieces before the Lord at Gilgal. Then Samuel left and went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his home in Gibeah. After that, Samuel never saw Saul again, but he was very sad for Saul, and the Lord was sorry he had made Saul king of Israel. John chapter 14 Jesus comforts his followers. Jesus said, Don't be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. I would not tell you this if it were not true. I am going there to prepare a place for you. When I have finished making it ready for you, I will come back. Then I will take you with me so that you can be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. Now that you have all known me, you will know my Father too. Yes, now you know the Father. You have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we need. Jesus answered, I have been with you followers of mine a long time. So you, Philip, should know me. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father too. So why do you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The things I have told you don't come from me. The Father lives in me and he is doing his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, the Father is in me. Or believe, because of the miracles I have done, I can assure you that whoever believes in me will do the same things I have done, and they will do even greater things than I have done because I am going to the Father. And if you ask for anything in my name, I will do it for you. Then the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will do what I command. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The helper is the Spirit of Truth. The people of the world cannot accept him because they don't see him or know him, but you know him. He lives with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you all alone like orphans. I will come back to you. In a very short time, the people in the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. You will live because I live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father. You will know that you are in me, and I am in you. Those who really love me are the ones who not only know my commands, but also follow them. My Father will love such people, and I will love them. I will make myself known to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, Lord, how will you make yourself known to us, but not to the world? Jesus answered, All who love me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, my Father and I will come to them and live with them. But anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. This teaching that you have heard from me is not really mine. It's from my Father who sent me. I have told you all these things while I am with you. But the Helper will teach you everything and cause you to remember all that I told you. This Helper is the Holy Spirit. 
the Father will send in my name. I leave you peace. It is my own peace I give you. I give you peace in a different way than the world does. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am leaving, but I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would be happy that I am going back to the Father, because the Father is greater than I am. I have told you this now, before it happens. Then when it happens, you will believe. I will not talk with you much longer. The ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me. The world must know that I love the Father. So I do exactly what the Father told me to do. Come now. Let's go. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28 to chapter 13, verse 9. Along the path of goodness there is life. That is the way to live forever. A wise son listens to his father's advice, but a proud son will not listen to correction. People get good things for the words they say, but those who cannot be trusted only want to hurt others. People who are careful about what they say will save their lives, but those who speak without thinking bring ruin on themselves. Lazy people always want things, but never get them. Those who work hard get plenty. Good people hate lies, but the wicked do evil, shameful things. Goodness protects honest people, but evil destroys those who love to sin. Some people pretend they are rich, but they have nothing. Others pretend they are poor, but they are really rich. The rich might have to pay a ransom to save their lives, but the poor never receive such threats. The light of those who do right shines brighter and brighter, but the lamp of the wicked becomes darker and darker. Thank you, everyone. That was day 144. Join us for day 145. We're continuing in 1 Samuel. And Samuel decides to go to Bethlehem because he's afraid that Saul will kill him. And in the meanwhile, an evil spirit bothers Saul. And so he doesn't ask for medicine or the doctor. He just wants someone to play amazing music. And that person's name to play the music is a man named... David. And in the book of John, Jesus continues speaking to his followers and explains that he is like a vine and they are the branches. He warns his followers so that they don't lose their faith when trouble comes. And we all know that trouble is certainly on its way. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.